hearing on LB 36, Senator Erdman. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Senator Urban. Thank you, Senator Walls. Sorry I'm late. I appreciate being here. Uh, my name is Steve Erdman, S-T-E-V-E-E-R-D-M-A-N. I represent District 47, which is 10 counties in the Panhandle. I'm here today to present to you uh, LB 36. LB 36 is a bill that would uh, ask schools, uh, tell schools or, or encourage schools to put in God we trust, the national motto in their school in a conspicuous place where it can be seen by the students. Uh, numerous states have already done this. Uh, this uh, in God we trust motto uh, was first mentioned by uh, Francis Scott Keyes back in the fourth verse of the national anthem. And he wrote the Star Spangled Banner. It's, it says, uh, he wrote the following, and this is to be our motto, in God we trust. In God we trust first appeared on our coins back in 1864, and then in 1957 it appeared on our money, our printed money, our paper money. The national motto, in God we trust, created by the Act of Congress in 1956. The bill was signed into law on July 30th, 1956, by then President Dwight Eisenhower. The national motto, in God we trust, was then affirmed again in 2002, and also in 2011 by the House of Representatives by an overwhelming majority, 396 to nine. They passed a resolution reaffirming the national model and encouraging the public to display this model in all public buildings, including public schools. Numerous state legislatures have passed similar laws in encouraging schools and state offices to place the poster with our national model in every classroom. The national motto is in, inscribed in gold letters above the speaker's podium in the U House of Representatives and on the walls of the U.S. Senate chambers and the visitor center there. More than 600 cities and counties nationwide display the national motto in their offices, their chambers, their official seals, and even outside on their police and sheriff cruisers. The bill is needed because the national motto is not being taught or displayed in Nebraska, Nebraska public schools. Yet it plays an important role in our history and in our heritage. This bill is also needed because school boards are afraid to display the national motto. Behind me, you will hear from people who are against the national motto being placed in our schools. And part of their issue will be its separation of church and state and those issues that are commonly mentioned when we talk about putting in God we trust as a display in our schools. Displaying the national motto in schools is not a violation of the Establishment Clause of the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. The separation between church and state appears nowhere, nowhere in our founding documents. No court anywhere in the U.S. has ever held a public posting, up, ever held the public posting of the God and we trust in violation of the U.S. Constitution. Instead, there is a strong legal support for doing so. In the Arrow versus United States 1970 High Court ruled, the High Court ruled in God we trust has nothing whatsoever to do with the establishment of religion. It is a use of patriotic, symbolic character and bears no true resemblance to the government sponsorship of religion or exercise thereof. A school district in the Arbiton Township in, in a High Court ruled that in God we trust is interwoven. It is so deeply the fabric of our civil polity that it is present, its present use may well present the type of involvement which the First Amendment prohibits. 
And the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals back in 2010 said the national motto does not violate the First Amendment. So today I bring you that, I bring you that to, to uh, for your consideration and your advancement. Uh, we have, as I said, in 1956, President Dwight D. Eisenhower uh, signed the declaration that put the national motto and God we trust on our money. Uh, as I said, it was reaffirmed again back in 2002 and in 2011. And uh, we, when we wrote this bill, we reviewed several other states, how they did it, and the bill that we fashioned it after <clears throat> was, uh, was the bill in Virginia. And so we went back and reviewed what Virginia wrote in their statute. And I'd like to pass this out, if you could pass this out. Because we wanted to see if there were other states that had done this. And are there other states, is there another state that has put a requirement on their attorney general to, affit, to defend public schools who had this model placed there that was challenged by somebody in court? And, and the answer is yes, it was. And 2002, and, and you'll, you'll see when you get the document there, in 2002, uh, the Virginia uh, legislature adopted the following. It says, posting certain statements in public schools this is all school boards and vineyards shall prominently post the statement in God we trust, the national motto enacted by Congress in 1956 in a conspicuous place in each of their schools for all students to read. The office of the attorney general shall, the office of attorney general shall intervene on behalf of the school boards and shall provide legal defense for the provisions of this action. And number two, the state school boards in their discretion may accept contributions in cash or in kind for any person as defined in their section 1-1319 to defray the cost of implementing this provision. So that was, that was the status of, uh, of the law in Virginia as we've seen it. And when we've seen that, then we decided to write our law very similar. And, and the bill says that if a school district is challenged in court, that the attorney general shall defend them. And so that is our goal. Our goal is to have it a conspicuous place uh, perhaps uh, maybe in the cafeteria where every student would see it on a daily basis or they could have it in each classroom if they decided to do that. The other uh, provision we have is that if someone wants to donate the sign or to help defray the cost of the sign, that would be accepted as well. So that's, that's kind of the gist of what we're trying to do today and I would be willing to try to help answer any questions. Thank you, Senator Erdman. Questions from the committee? <coughs> Senator McKinney. Thank you. Um, Senator Erdman, when you refer to God, are we leaving God to just one religion, or is it mo are we encompassing every religion that recognizes God? Senator McKinney, I'm having tr I'm having trouble understanding. It. Sorry. When when we are saying in Thanks. God we trust, is that just for Christianity? No. No. Th it's not a statement of religion. It's not okay. a statement of religion. But you do recognize that God in other religions is identified by different names. So when, if, if I'm Islamic, right. should we say in Allah we trust as well? That's not the national motto. The national motto is in God we trust. Two years ago when I introduced this bill, a, a person who came in and testified in favor was a Muslim. And that person was in favor of putting in God we trust in the schools as well. It's not a statement of religion. It's a national motto. But God has multiple names, depending on what religion you... I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Senator McKinney. Other questions? Senator Day. Thank you, Chairwoman Wilson. Thank you, Senator Erdman, for being here today. Um, <clears throat> so why is this necessary? Why is it necessary for the legislature to tell public buildings that they have to put something so that everyone in the building can see it. Could you say that again? Why they have to Why, why is this necessary? Why is this bill necessary? It's necessary, like in my testimony, I said that is not something that we see on a daily basis and that has been left out. It's our national motto. We have it in almost every courthouse in the state. A lot of state and federal buildings have it and it's an opportunity for the schools to place it there. There are many schools that would like to place this, but they're concerned about the liability. But I guess it, that doesn't answer the question of why we need to legislate that. Why you're saying that this 
provides them the opportunity to do so or if if the school did not want to post it in their school do they have the option to not do so no they do not so they have to it's the national motto it says they shall place in a conspicuous place the national motto so then i guess my other question would be um specifically as it relates to schools and children um i know that you said that you don't feel like it's a religious statement but god is related to a religious practice of varying kinds not any one specific um, but what about my question would be what about the the public school students who who don't practice any religion or who they don't believe in god or their family doesn't their family doesn't prescribe to any religion right um the courts have ruled on numerous occasions that this is not a statement of religion. This is a ceremonial proclamation by the federal government that says, in God we trust is the national motto. This is not a declaration of religion. They have said that on several, several court cases have said this is not a statement of religion. But we have to recognize the fact that when we're talking about God, we're talking about religion. We're talking about God. Which is related to a religion or any religion, right? I mean, I don't, I'm not quite, I'm not quite picking up on how discussing God is not discussing something related to religion. Well, the court cases that I've read in the last couple of days looking this up, they all concluded that this was not a statement of religion. This is not yeah, go against the enactment clause. Well, that, and that's why I'm asking your thoughts. Like, so I hear you on the court cases and all of that. I under, I, I like, I'm understanding that. But when we're talking about God, whether whatever that God is, um, we're. I mean, I feel like it's almost. I don't. I don't want to say disingenuous, but to say that when we're talking about God, that we're not talking about religion, feels. Like maybe we're not, I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm not sure what I want to ask exactly, but um, I'll just leave it, <laughs> leave it at that. Thank, right, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Day. Senator Linehan. Thank you, Chair Owen Walls. Would you, I know that you're not into, I mean, I think I know you pretty well, Senator Irving, so I don't think you're gonna like this question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. Uh, would you consider, Sitter is a part of, because part of your concern is, right, there are schools that want to do this and they can't. They feel like they can't. So would you uh, consider the idea that the bill said they would, they don't have to, but they may? Instead of the word shall, change it to may? Yes. You know, I've not, I've not given that a lot of thought. I just, when we seen the, what Virginia did, it seemed to be appropriate for us, and that was the strategy that we were approaching with this bill. Uh, I would have to give that some consideration. Okay, thank you very much for thank being you. here. Thank you. Other questions from the committee? Senator Pansing Brooks. Thank you, thank you, Senator Erdman. Is this our third time that we've discussed this, or second? Second. Second, yeah. Um, so I guess what I'm interested in is if it's not a statement of religion, what is it? A historical statement? It, it, it is, that's exactly what it is. It's a ceremonial historical statement that was put in place by Congress back in 56. Okay. Um, and I guess I'm just, um, having gone through the public schools, I have a strong faith and it really didn't affect me that that wasn't there, but I did know because it's on our money that that's our state slogan, so, or our national motto. And again, so I'm, I'm not sure that, that it's necessary to be able to teach kids what our national motto is. I'm not sure. I'm why why is it necessary? It's on our money. It's on, it's on our money. It's on our money. Yeah. Yes, so sir. most kids would understand that that is our national motto without it necessarily be emblazoned on the schools. And if it's, it's on the schools, I mean, unless we have some little asterisk that says not a statement of faith, but of history, um, it's going to be taken as a statement of religion by most people. 
It could be. I don't know how people are going to accept that it. it's the national model. That's what they put on okay. the. That's what they decided back in 1956. And as we've discussed before, I'd much prefer them to understand and know our state motto, which is equality before the law, because it has a greater impact on our citizens. But the, the, our state motto is equality yes, before the law. It and I, I wish that were the one that were uh, emblazoned in each school, because it has much greater effect on our citizens. You know, you can bring a bill like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Thank you. Senator McKinney. Thank you. Do you recognize that putting in God we trust in our schools might offend some people? I don't, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe there'll be some people who, who will come and testify and might be uh, atheists. Uh, and it may not be pleasing to those people. But I have a I have a difficult time understanding why atheists spend so much time trying to deny something that doesn't exist if God doesn't exist. You know, so what happens so many times in, in America is, is uh, we now think that because somebody puts a statement up or does say something that we're offended. And that is our decision. We can make a decision to look at something and read it and be offended or we can look at it as what it is and move on. And so. If I'm going to go about my life thinking about if I say something or write this, somebody's going to be offended. I won't write anything. So if somebody sees the national model and they're offended by it, then that's their choice to be offended. And so consequently, we can't protect everything, everybody from everything. Being offended is your choice. Yes, that is. But as legislators, we have you know, the responsibility to make sure that we take into account the feelings of all people and not just some that believe in God and, and not those that don't. And I'm not just saying atheists would disagree with this. I know people who are Christians and Baptists and Islamic that don't feel like this needs to be in our school. So it's not just atheists that I'm thinking about when I, when I ask that question. There's others that don't feel like the same way people feel like there, there shouldn't be sex education in schools, there's a lot of people that feel like there shouldn't be religion placed in schools in, in whatever form, no matter if you say it's the national model or, model or not. I guarantee if you did a poll and said, what do you think about when you see in God we trust, I'm almost sure a higher percentage would say religion or some type of religion. Was there a question there? No, it's just okay. a statement. Right. Thank you. All right, thank you. Senator Merman. Thank you, Senator Walls, and thanks for bringing this bill, Senator Erdman. Um, I, I've been around a long time, as you have, um, yeah, I assume, um, but uh, I've been to D.C. a few times and uh, through the years, and I've noticed uh, the buildings in D.C. that uh, some of the buildings in, inside and out uh, used to have references to God in them, and they've, they've uh, some of them have been changed since I was there originally, uh, you know, 40, well, more than that years ago. Um, so I appreciate your uh, uh, reference to this is our history. And uh, for instance, the new monument in DC to the Reverend Dr. Mark, Martin Luther King, I, I don't think it has any reference to God in it. If, if it does, it's not very much. Okay. And, and it doesn't even call him Reverend which, by the way, is, is who he was and who, who he was always referred to back when, in the day Correct. when he was around. Um, so so do you, you do agree then that, uh, or do you agree that it's important to uh, include our true history of our country, Correct. which includes yeah. God? Right. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions from the committee? I see none. Thank you, Senator Thank Erdman. You. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry I was late. That's okay this time. <laughs> First proponent.
Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Here we go. My name is Amber Parker, A-M-B-E-R, last name Parker, P-A-R-K-E-R. And uh, I'm greatly troubled to see that we are catering so much to what um, one religion is over another because atheism is truly a religion because uh, religion is the things you think, say, and do that is an act of worship which makes religion. So we could get in that argument, but I want to stick to some facts today. In 1956, Congress made the national motto, In God We Trust. Senator Day, you asked, why would we need LB 36? And I really appreciate that question, because as uh, state senators, that's, you know, we shouldn't just um, bring forward legislation to create legislation. Uh, it's to uphold the law, the governing law of the land, the Nebraska Constitution. This is what LB 36 would be doing. It is simply giving protection to public schools, teachers, and educating ch children of our nation's national motto, in God we trust. LB 36 protects our teachers and public schools by, as the bill shares, that the Attorney General shall intervene on behalf of any school board and any other party named as a defendant for their role in implementing this section. This is important to the state of Nebraska because groups like Freedom From Religion Foundation target to remove any national heritage of God by bullying through the finances and by their finances and attorneys. By LB 36, having the Attorney General represent by intervening on behalf of the school or schools, this will protect the teachers and being able to educate on our nation's national motto without fear of being sued for doing their job. I also want to list that there are 19 other states that have um, proposed, have, have this similar legislation as LB 36, Alabama, Arizona, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Michigan, Mississippi, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee. Hold on, I'm missing a part. Texas, Utah, Virginia, and furthermore, um, the or the fiscal note I would like to address has now changed. There is a private donor who is in Nebraska, is a resident, and this is so important, and they care about that our future generations understand uh, national heritage and the motto, In God We Trust, which is on our money, that um, this fiscal note that says $10,000, I want to let you now know it is $5,000, because a private donor and that is one thing that LB 36 has done. So I don't know about you guys, but how many of you could see a fiscal note um, saying the cost in the state of Nebraska would be $5,000. So it's no longer $10,000. And that concludes my testimony. Thank, Thank you. you. Questions from the committee? I see none. Thank you for coming Thank today. You. Next proponent. Good afternoon. My name is uh, S. Wayne Smith. That's S. Period. Wayne. W. A. Y. N. E. S. M. I. T. H. And I'm asking you to please vote yes on L. B. 36. The founders believed that without God-based values, America could not survive. The motto "In God We Trust" goes back to 1863, as was mentioned before. When it was proposed as our God, excuse me, our country, our God, or God, our trust. And the final version was In God We Trust and appeared on the two cent coin in 1864. Every founder was preoccupied by the Bible. Benjamin Franklin said, the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. He also said, if men were so wicked as we now see them with religion, what would, we be, what would they be without it? A Russian novelist wrote, where there is no God, all is permitted. 
I believe that this is what we are seeing today. Everything is permitted. John Adams wrote, our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. The Declaration of Independence, Independence establishes that rights come from nature and nature's God, not from government. Generally, individuals, in the Western world at least, have adopted the values passed down by centuries of Judeo-Christian values. They are living on what one author called cut flower ethics. Flowers are nurtured in a certain soil, and when cut from that soil, they can appear to survive for a certain amount of time, but they soon wither and die. So too, Western society's ethical values, when nurtured in Judeo-Christian soil and cut off from that soil, they too will seem to survive, but eventually, like cut flowers, those values will wither and die. America was founded on an idea, a value system, and that value system unique to America is on every American coin, liberty, in God we trust, and e pluribus unum. All three values are necessary components that have made the United States of America not only the most prosperous nation, but also the most tolerant and compassionate society in history. God is such an important part of American history that we need to remind our children of that history by displaying our national, autumn, our national motto, in God we trust, in every school. Please vote LB 36 out of committee for floor debate. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith, and thank you for staying under the three minutes. We appreciate that. Oh, you're Any welcome. Any questions from the committee? That, that wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job. I see no questions. Thank you so much for coming today. Okay. Next proponent. <clears throat> Well, good morning, um, good afternoon. I typed this during the morning, so that's a little bit. I actually have in here uh, Bill L836. It should be LB36, but anyway. Um, my name is Robin, R-O-B-I-N, Calcara, C-A-L-C-A-R-A. -A -A. I live at 1933 Preamble Lane, Lincoln, Nebraska. Senator Moorfield is our representative, 68521. <clears throat> I'm a police chaplain, I'm a full-time prison chaplain, I'm a husband, a father, and a grandfather of 14 grandchildren. I come today to speak in favor of LB 36. I should say the man before me was congratulated for being under three minutes and as a preacher that is difficult, but, uh, but I'm going to do it really well. So anyway, I deal with, a gr as you can tell by my jobs, I deal with a great deal of anti-social, anti-God behavior. I too am a Christ follower. In today's cancel culture where sh statues are destroyed, monuments are wrecked in the name of, of, of common ground, I'm reminded that our father, our founders, that came here to America to escape religious tyranny from the start of our forefathers, have they articulated that thought of in God we trust, as our, excuse me, as our Constitution clearly says. Congress, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and petition the government as for redress of grievance. But it says, of, uh, shall establish no cause clause to, um, to, pre to prevent or to, to establish religion. Starting in 1962, our legislators began to reshape, the, in the light of this misrepresentation, our First Amendment rights that says Congress shall make no laws 
concerning the establishment from religion. That was a misstatement. And as time goes by, we have allowed those of anti-God belief to expand that into being anything that, that mentioned a belief in a higher power cannot be represented in the public square. By mentioning a, gen a generic mention of a God, it does not violate this amendment of our Constitution. As some might try to tell you today, in fact, the very mention of God does not make one religious. Wikipedia defines irreligion as irreligion in the United States refers to the extent oh boy, of, the, of the lack and indifference or rejection of religious faith of the country. Based on surveys, between 8 and 15% of people polled demonstrated an objective non-religious attitudes, basically a naturalistic worldview. The number of self-identified atheists and agnostics is around 4% each, while many people formally affiliate with religion are likewise non-believing. Okay. Okay, I'm almost done. Just wrap it up. Thank you, I will. Thank you. As you can see, the number of atheists and agnostics of 4% or 8% uh, total. As you hear today, those should not rule our, always our discussion. So 62, our misrepresentation has more effective prayer, more than effective prayer in schools, but it's also evolved into an anti-God culture. And I would just finish that by saying that um, I, in my, in the prison, my prison work, I deal with people of all faiths, Muslims, people from Buddhist faith I was with yesterday, and everything. And I, I have never had one come to me and say, you offend me because you say God. They represent that. They, they understand that as a, as a higher power, as a creator. And, uh, and I appreciate all your questions. And Thank you. Thank I'm you, sure, Mr. Calcara. I'm sure I'm done. Uh, questions from the committee? Please. I see. I, I do want to thank you for your service uh, in the prison system. Oh, I sure, no worries. Thank you. Sorry I didn't make three minutes. <laughs> Next proponent. My name is Lee Todd, L-E-E-T-O-D-D. -E -E I live in Lincoln, Nebraska. I'm going to focus on state rights as opposed to uh, some misconceptions. Twain once said that it's not what you don't know that gets you into trouble. It's what you think you know for certain. That just ain't so. Um, so what did Jefferson mean in 1802 in that Dan Barry letter when he says there is this wall of separation between church and state? And many have construed what Jefferson said to mean that under no circumstances should any level of government endorse or, shall we say, acknowledge religion? I would like to consider today why that fiction just ain't so. In 1808, Jefferson went on to say, I consider the government of the United States as interdicted from intermeddling with religious institutions, their doctrines and disciplines or exercises. It, meaning the federal government, must then rest with the states. This is states' rights. This is a state decision. Uh, paragraph four, even after the Constitution was ratified, many people don't know that after 1788, there were still five states that had state religions. Massachusetts continued to have a state religion in conjunction with the federal Constitution until 1833, paragraph four. All these are sourced as far as the paragraphs. I don't have time to go into all of them. Madison, the father of the United States Constitution, Federalist 40, the federal powers are limited and that the states in all unenumerated cases are left in enjoyment of their sovereign and independent jurisdictions in 45. 
Madison went on to clarify that and reaffirm that federal powers are to be enumerated and limited. Those powers not enumerated and limited to the federal government are reserved for the state's uh, amendments 9 and 10. Uh, Madison, for as long as he lived, even four decades later, was affirming the same thing. And you can read about that in paragraph 6, or excuse me, 7. Alexander Hamilton, probably the strongest proponent of a strong federal executive, in fact, he endorsed a lifetime for the presidency, he wanted state senators to also be uh, in position for a lifetime. His Federalist 78 is a veritable expose of states' rights supremacy over and above the federal government, and again, those non-enumerated powers. We can go on and circle back to Jefferson and his very instrumental sovereign states are granting the federal government enumerated powers. Should the federal government exercise a power that has not been delegated to it, the states are duty bound to interpose. And finally, George Washington, it is the duty of all nations to acknowledge the providence of Almighty God, to obey his will, to be grateful for his benefits, and to humbly implore his protection and favor. While I do support uh, LB 36 in God We Trust, I would love to see this passed and get uh, brought out of committee. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Todd. You're welcome. Uh, any questions? Next proponent. Forgot my glasses. No. <laughs> Thank you. Good afternoon, Chairman Waltz and members of the Education Committee. My name is Fanchon Blythe. That's spelled F A N C H O N B as in boy L Y T H E. Our nation has a long history with the phrase in God we trust. In eighteen fourteen, Francis Scott Key penned and this be our motto, in God is our trust, as a part of the fourth verse of the Star Spangled Banner. The phrase, in God we trust, first appeared on U.S. coins in 1864 in the aftermath of the Civil War. The national motto, in God we trust, was created by an act of Congress in 1956 and signed into law on July 30th by President Dwight Eisenhower. The following year, the first paper money with the motto, In God We Trust, was printed. In 2006, the U.S. Senate reaffirmed our national motto to commemorate its 50th anniversary. Then, five years later, in 2011, the, US, the House of Representatives voted in tremendous bipartisan effort 396 to 6 to reaffirm In God We Trust as our official motto. The resolution encouraged it public display in all public buildings, public schools, and other government buildings. At this time, there are 19 states that have passed the legislation um, to have the motto in public schools, and Amber already gave you those states. The national motto is inscribed in gold letters above the speaker's rostrum in the U.S. House of Representatives. It is also inscribed on the walls of the United States Senate chambers. In my opinion, it is very sad that the motto, In God We Trust, is not currently being displayed in our public schools here in Nebraska. Apparently, there is fear of being sued by the Freedom From Religious Foundation or the American Atheist Association. Yet no court anywhere in the U.S. has ever held that public posting of In God We Trust violates the Constitution. Since the U.S. Supreme Court removed prayer and Bible reading in public schools in 1963, our country has seen a significant decline in behavioral and moral standards. The increase of teenage pregnancy and children being raised in fatherless homes are just two examples of our continuing national tragedy. Last week, I became aware of a book that the LPS district has allowed in some schools. The book is titled, It's Perfectly Normal. It's geared in indoctrinating 10-year-old children. 
as a married Christian woman, mother, and grandmother, I don't feel comfortable sharing this graphic content in mixed company, and I am grieved that children are being forcibly desensitized in appropriate boundaries. Here is an example from page four of the book. Sexual intercourse happens when two people, a female and a male, or two females and two males, feel very sexy and very attracted to each other and want to be very close to each other in a sexual way. When a female and a male are so close that the male's penis goes inside the female's vagina, the vagina stretches in a way that it fits around the penis. Excuse me. Sadly. The, the red light has come on. Okay, Can I'm almost done, please. Any questions? I'm almost done. Sadly, this content is deemed as appropriate by some misguided adults at the same time. The state willfully chooses to remove recognition of God from public square. It is no wonder that we are seeing unprecedented teenage suicide rates and many students dropping out of school. In close, I close with the fourth verse of the Star Spangled Banner in its entirety. Oh, thus be it ever when Freeman Free men shall stand between their loved homes in that war's, war's desolation. Blessed be victory and peace. May the heavens, res sorry, my glasses, rescued land. Praise the power that hath made and preserved us national. The conquer we must when we are cause is just, and thus be our motto, in God we trust. And the star-spangled banner is triumph shall wave over the land, the free, and the home of the brave. Okay, uh, we do want to make sure that everybody gets a chance to speak. So are there any questions for her? Thank you. Not. Thank you so much for coming today. Next proponent. Uh, Representative Walls and committee members, um, welcome. Uh, I am Mary Hamilton, and it's spelled M-A-R-Y, and then Hamilton is H-A-M-I-L-T-O-N. And I would just like to briefly speak. I'm not going to talk a lot, um, but I'm in, I'm in favor or support of LB 36, which would require the school, each school, to have at least one poster displayed of our national motto and God we trust. Um, and I'm not going to go over the history that everyone else has already said. I know you're familiar with it. But as a certified and licensed professional teacher in the state of Nebraska, I appeal to you today to uphold our national motto and encourage its public display in our schools here in Nebraska. And the reason I really believe in this, there's several reasons, but I know that you were asked why. Why should we do this? And I will tell you why. Because those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And I do believe that we need to keep our history in the public schools and uphold our history, the true history of our country. And um, I do believe that most of the people believe that that should be true because the House of Representatives overwhelmingly, 396 to 6, reaffirmed in God We Trust as our official motto. And they encouraged its public display in all public buildings and schools and government institutions. Uh, I ran in the annual Eisenhower Marathon in Kansas a year ago. I was fortunate to get first place in my age category, which I got the medal here on display. It's really pretty, so I thought I'd bring it to show you. Um, I visited the, the presidential, the home and the library of Dwight D. Eisenhower. He was a great man that stood for great ideals of our country. He said, quote, in this way, we are reaffirming the, uh, let's see, tremendous, oops, sorry, I can't read my own handwriting here, religious faith in America, uh, present and future, in the way we shall constantly strengthen these spiritual weapons, which will forever be our country's most powerful resource in peace and war. And that's, I do think that that is a very important thing, that we remember that. 
or remember our history and teach that to our students. And that's what I intend to do. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Let me see if there's any questions. Any questions from the committee? I see none. Thank you for coming today. Uh, thank you. Next proponent. Good afternoon, Senators. My name is Mark Bonkowitz, M-A-R-K-B-O-N-K-I-E-W-I-C-Z. I live in District 12 in Omaha, Nebraska. I'm here today to testify in support of LV36 and God We Trust National Motto. I'm testifying so that it will be displayed in every school classroom in the state of Nebraska, and here's my reasons for this legislation to do so. Our founding fathers and mothers risked their lives on rickety schooner ships to leave their homelands of Europe to come and settle America so they could have religious freedom. The majority of founding fathers sacrificed their homes, land, fortunes, limbs, and lives to fight against the tyranny of Great Britain, to start our country, and to create our preamble, constitution, and bill of rights. Our national model is inscribed in gold letters above the speaker's podium in the U.S. House of Representatives, and it's also inscribed on the walls of the U.S. Senate chambers. The national motto is permanently displayed in 92 Nebraska courthouses. Therefore, each school classroom is the next logical location for our national motto in Nebraska buildings, paid for with tax dollars. We teach our children in the public and private schools to live their lives with solid character, honesty, and integrity, which are biblical principles given to us by Almighty God. I urge you to vote LV36 out of this Education Committee for floor debate, where it receives the scrutiny of questions and answers that rigorous floor debate can provide before it's passed into law. Thank you for this opportunity to testify on behalf of the Second House. Thank you for coming today. Questions, Senator McKinney. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Bakowitz. I was wondering if you were aware that our founding fathers escaped religious tyranny to only come to America to enslave uh, Africans, my, my ancestors, and they used God to do so. Are you aware of that? Uh, yes, I'm aware that slavery took place at that time, and I'm also aware of the fact that they did not invent slavery. I believe slavery goes clear back to the Israelites in the Bible who were enslaved by the Egyptians. It, I'm, I'm aware that slavery existed prior, but... I'm sorry, I can't understand you. I am aware that slavery existed prior to slavery in America, but I just wanted to point out that our founding fathers and 12 presidents owned slaves, and they used God as a way to keep individuals enslaved. Would you not understand why some descendants of those enslaved individuals would have a problem with in God we trust being inside of our schools. Um, I can appreciate that, um, and I have two thoughts. Number one is that I hope that they remember that there were 650,000 men who died in order to eliminate slavery. So um, that would be my response. The, the second one is that, you know, all of us have things as we're going down the road of life that we're offended with. You know, evolution is taught in a public school as though it's a fact. And evolution has never been proven to be a fact. And there are people who are offended by that. So um, there are just certain things in life that we learn that we have to live with as far as being offended. And I would also ask about the being the offended part. Is everybody offended every time that they pull out money and pay for goods and services? because in God we trust is on all of our money. So if we're gonna be offended about a plaque in a prominent position within the school, gosh, I guess we ought to be really offended about all the money and maybe we should be working to try to take it off of there. I would, you know, be willing to make that argument with you. Um, I, I just don't understand why in God we trust is needed to be displayed in our schools, especially with the history of this country and the usage of God and the usage of religion 
to further enslave individuals for hundreds of years. And um, that's, that's all I got to say. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? <clears throat> Senator Merman. Uh, thank you, Senator Walls. Thank you, Mr. Bonkwitz. Um, where do our freedoms and our rights come from? Is it the federal government, state government? <laughs> no, our inalienable rights come from Almighty God, and it's government's responsibility to make sure that we keep them that way. Thank you. Other questions from the committee? I see none. Thank you for coming okay, today. Thank you. Next proponent. Any opponents that would like to speak? Senator Walls, members of the Education Committee. My name is Colby Kalash, I represent the Nebraska Association of School Boards, also testifying today on behalf of the Nebraska Council of School Administrators in opposition of LB 36. This is a, a bill that did engender quite a bit of discussion within our membership um, across the state. And the discussion and what led me here today really centers around three things that I, I want to bring to the, to the committee's attention. Uh, the bill is written right now is, is pretty vague as to the mandate, and that's, that's what it is, and I appreciate that um, there's a discussion about the shall and the may. This is a shall um, with regard to the clarity of what counts. You can imagine the kind of calls that I got uh, when this bill was introduced saying, well, can I, can I frame a dollar bill and put it up? Is that good enough? Can I tape a penny above every door? You know, the, the clarity of it was, was, was a question. Um, school boards would do appreciate the ability to accept contributions to defray the cost, but there's, there's no guarantee that they'd be able to raise the funds, and thus this does become a, a mandate. Um, finally, this bill goes to the heart of local control. We do believe that the decision of whether or not to place a sign of nature should rest at the local school board, um, and there are schools across the state who would likely, uh, and a do this and appreciate the legal authority and intervention for a lawsuit. However, they, they believe that their level is the appropriate level to make that decision. With that, I'll conclude my testimony. Thank you. Questions from the committee? Senator Merman. Thank you, Senator Walls, and thanks for testifying. Um, do, you, do you think that uh, schools are afraid to put that, the phrase in God or the uh, uh, motto in God we trust there now because of, they're afraid of lawsuits? I, uh, what I learned through the introduction of this bill is there are some schools that have considered it, considered doing so, um, and yeah, they they asked me, and my answer to them is we well, should we should run this by your legal counsel and make sure you feel comfortable enough uh, to do that. I do know that if if this were passed in a permissive way, I know I know several districts who would make who would put this on their agenda, have community input, and, and talk about that. I suspect that the reason some have not done it already is for fear of litigation. And if this bill would pass, would that alleviate that fear? I believe it would. Um, if, I mean, it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't prevent litigation, right? This, this bill doesn't say you can't be sued if, if you do that. Um, it, but it does, would say that you would at least get some AG support <laughs> if, if that were the case. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee? I see none. Thank you. Thank you. Any other opponents? J-U-D-Y-K-I-N-G, and I am an opponent of LB 36 and have been several times. And 
please make this a part of the record. And I think it's very clear why we're here. It's a, it's, it's a bill relating to, to God in a Christian way, or it wouldn't be, you wouldn't have all these testifiers here. Um, he's just trying to slide it through under a, you know, a motto, but it's not just a motto. It's a Christian God forced over the top of the doors of all of our schools. And he wants to bring, he's relating it to our heritage and like Senator McKinney said, you know, slavery was a part of our heritage. And some of our heritage isn't that great. And uh, so, I have another thing from the comment. Anyway, I'll start with my, as we consider this bill LB 36, it reminds me of a story I'd like to talk about of three children who are attending public school. The first child comes from a Hindu family. Their belief system recognize, recognizes multiple gods so that when the child looks at the sign that says, in God we trust, they are confused. The second child is a young Native American who is also confused because their belief system is based on a nativistic view of the world in which there is no God. The last child comes from a fine family. Their mother and father own various commissions and boards and well thought of in the community, but they're agnostic and they believe in no gods, God or gods. There may be another child who comes from a wealthy privileged <coughs> family. They believe in God, only one God, and their God is white and probably a Republican. Their parents sat at home cheering as they watched the takeover of the DC Capitol on June 6th wearing their red mini mega hats while they watched the glorious battle and cheered, up, cheered it on. So proud they were. Their parents are probably Trumpers. They wor worship the golden idol of Trump and it harkens back to another golden idol from your Bible. Our children in Nebraska come from diverse backgrounds and we have to realize that means diverse perspectives and beliefs. The fact that they may not worship Mother Earth or worship multiple gods, or the fact that they may worship Mother Earth or worship multiple gods should not be a part of our school curriculum, but only in that we teach diversity. Celebrate that we are different and that is what makes us strong and we, can force a, and we can't force a single god where diverse beliefs exist. And I think that's all I have to say. Thank you for your testimony. Are there any questions from the committee? Senator Merman. Thank you, Senator Walls. Um, since you brought up Christianity, I've got to ask, um, what uh, color was Jesus, do you know? That's, or what, what uh, race? It depends on what you think it is. And what what do you think it is? Um, I, I it's white. know that Jesus was Jewish. Mm -hmm. What What color is God? Uh, I don't think uh, in, in the Christian Bible it doesn't refer to what color God is. God of, includes, uh, Jesus, includes all races. Is it white? Excuse me? Is a picture of Jesus in your house white? I think no. that uh, only the senator can ask the question to respond. Okay. I know. I'll answer it though, no. I know. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, any other opponents? Anybody that would like to speak in the neutral? Uh, thank you, Senator Erdman. You're welcome to close. While he's coming up, we had uh, two written testimony in lieu of person testimony. They were both opponents. One was Todd Schleckke from AFCN and Spike Eichel from ACLU. We also had uh, 36 uh, position letters written that were proponents and five position letters that were written that were opponents. No, no neutral letters. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you for all those who came and testified. Uh, just to kind of uh, follow up on what uh, Mr. Koash said, a lot of school districts are concerned about what will happen as far as litigation goes. And I, when I reviewed what had happened in Virginia, uh, they passed that in 2002. In 2003, there was a lawsuit, and uh, the assistant attorney general was the one that defended the school district, and the school district was successful. And so uh, that's the intention of this bill, 
so that uh, the small school districts, a lot of them don't have the funds to hire an attorney, and they're surely not going to put this up if there's a problem that they may be sued over. And so I, I think this is an opportunity for them to actually exercise their, their free right to place this uh, motto in the school, and I would encourage you to advance this to the uh, floor and uh, for consideration there. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Erdman. That closes our, oh, any other questions? That closes our hearing Thank on LB 36. And we will open on LB 87.